In so doing, can I call Secretary Sajid Javid to make a statement. Sajid Javid. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I am honoured to have been asked to become Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. I understand the responsibility that comes with this job, especially at this critical moment. As someone who has sat on these front benches for many years, this past year has been a difficult one. I have been frustrated not to be able to play my part in helping to meet the greatest public health challenge our country has ever faced. So I am especially proud, Mr Deputy Speaker, to have been given this opportunity for public service. Nothing embodies the spirit of public service more than our National Health Service and those who work in our social care. It's seen, it, it, I've seen it myself in my own constituency. I saw it again just this morning at St Thomas's Hospital, where I met doctors and nurses and volunteers who have moved mountains this past year. Now they're helping us vaccinate our way out of this pandemic. I pay tribute to them all, and I pledge to do everything I can to deliver for them and the people of this great country. And I look forward to working with colleagues on all sides of the House uh, as we together work on this vital mission. We are making phenomenal progress with our vaccination programme. Vaccination is now open to every adult in the country. 84% of adults have got a jab and 61% of adults have had two doses. This progress has allowed us to safely take those first three steps out of the lockdown and on towards greater freedoms that we can enjoy today. We owe this strong position not only to the NHS, but everyone that has played their part. I want to take this opportunity also to pay tribute to my predecessor, my honourable friend, the member for West Suffolk, who had, who had worked hard throughout all these testing times. He has achieved a great amount in the work that he did, and I know that he will have more to offer in public life, and I wish him the very best. Mr Deputy Speaker, there remains a big task ahead of us to restore our freedoms, freedoms that, save for the greatest of circumstances, no government should ever wish to curtail. So my task is to help return the economic and cultural life that makes this country so great, while of course protecting life and our NHS. Now that task has been made all the more difficult by the Delta variant, which we now know makes up some 95% of new cases in the UK. Not only does it spread more easily, but the evidence points to a higher risk of those who have not been vaccinated needing hospital treatment compared to the previously dominant alpha variant. This narrowing of the race between the virus and the vaccine led to the government's difficult decision to pause step four on our roadmap until 19th of July. We're using this extra time to protect as many people as we can. When the government took that decision on June the 14th, over 4.3 million over 40s have had a first dose, but not a second. Now that's down to 3.2 million people over 40. We can all be assured by how many more people are getting the life-saving opportunity that the vaccine offers. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, at this two-week review point, I want to update the House on our progress to our roadmap to freedom. Mr Deputy Speaker, our aim is that around two-thirds of all adults in this country will have had both doses by 19th July. We're bringing forward second doses and bringing forward our target for first doses too so we can meet that 19th July goal. Vaccine uptake remains sky high. We've seen that age is no barrier for enthusiasm for getting the jab. As of this weekend, more than half of adults under 30 have taken up the chance to be vaccinated, including, in the last couple of weeks, all three of my own adult children. And our vaccines are working, including against the Delta variant. The latest modelling from Public Health England shows that they have saved over 27,000 lives and have prevented over 7 million people from getting COVID-19. Now, we do, not know, we do know 
that after a single dose of vaccine, the effectiveness is lower against the new Delta variant at around a 33% reduction in symptomatic disease. But two doses of the vaccine are just as effective against hospital admission with the Delta variant compared to the Alpha variant. The jabs are making a difference in our hospitals too. In January, people over 65 who were vaccinated earlier in our program made up the vast majority of hospital admissions. The latest data shows that that group now makes up less than a third. So while cases now are ticking up, the number of deaths remains mercifully low and we'll continue to investigate how our vaccines are breaking that link between cases, hospitalizations and deaths. And I'm also encouraged by new data just today from Oxford University's mix and match trial, which shows that a mixed schedule of jabs, such as getting the AstraZeneca jab first and then the Pfizer second, could give our booster vaccination program more flexibility and possibly even some better immune responses. Now, finally, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we continue to see a rise in hospitalizations. Although in line with the kinds of numbers we had anticipated at this point in our roadmap, the number of people needing hospital treatment for COVID-19 has doubled since the start of May. Admissions are most clearly increasing in the northeast and the southwest of England. So we've been boosting testing centres and vaccines in those areas and keeping a close watch on the numbers. Now, I spent my first day as Health Secretary just yesterday, looking at the data and testing it to the limit. Whilst we decided not to bring forward step four, we see no reason to go beyond the 19th of July. Because, in truth, no date we choose comes with zero risk for COVID. We know we cannot simply eliminate it. We have to learn to live with it. We also know that people and businesses need certainty, so we want every step to be irreversible. And make no mistake, Mr Deputy Speaker, the restrictions on our freedoms, they must come to an end. We owe it to the British people who have sacrificed so much to restore their freedoms as quickly as we possibly can and not to wait a moment longer than we need to. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, with the numbers heading in the right direction, all while we protect more and more people each day, July the 19th remains our target date. The Prime Minister has called it our terminus date. For me, 19th July is not only the end of the line, but the start of an exciting new journey for our country. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, at this crucial moment in our fight back against this pandemic, we must keep our resolve and keep on our roadmap to freedom so that together we can beat this pandemic and we can build back better. It is a task that I am deeply honoured to lead and one I know will succeed. I commend this statement to the House. Yeah.